So what I would like to do in this video is talk about how traditional viruses have evolved. And by traditional, I specifically mean what we call um, file infectors, or, or also called uh, parasitic threats. Uh, and these are threats that basically have a host associated with them. And, and um, so file infectors and parasitic threats, and, and actually they're kind of synonymous with each other. Uh, and these are threats that, that are different from what we typically see today, but they are kind of the, the original kind of old school viruses. So today we, we typically see um, we typically something called a Trojan, and a Trojan basically is a standalone piece of malware. Uh, and a file infector, on the other hand, needs some type of a host in order to, uh, to function, to kind of live. It, it, it's kind of a parasite in that sense, and that's why the term parasitic infector uh, comes about. Now, file infectors really were the the kind of threat that gave rise to the whole notion of, of antivirus and the antivirus community. And, and really, we do see them from time to time. So for example, uh, the Salady threat, and I'll, I'll, maybe I'll talk about that in a future video. Uh, Salady is a, is a classic example. It's a foul we see a lot of. We, we see this threat very frequently, especially in, in other countries outside the US. And Salady is a threat which is very popular. It's also a file infector. So even though file infectors were kind of traditional viruses, we do still see them frequently. And it's important to kind of understand how these, these types of threats evolved. Now, I, there are a couple of reasons besides just the fact that we do see these threats. I think that a lot of the techniques that the early file infectors used have now been adapted for use by Trojans. And so we definitely are seeing kind of a bit of a, a temporal evolution uh, in threats that, that, that kind of transcend uh, the boundaries, if you will, of, of uh, the class of threat we're seeing. Uh, the second thing is that many of the defense techniques that the antivirus community developed to counteract the original kind of file infector threats did lead to their evolution, which in turn led to, uh, I guess, new antivirus techniques, which I guess also led to new virus techniques and so on and so forth. So we had a bit of a vicious cycle uh, and a co-evolution, if you will, between uh, uh, virus techniques and uh, antivirus techniques. And so I think it's important to look back at uh, why things are the way they are so we can kind of get a handle on maybe what we can do in the future in terms of being able to defend against this class of threats. So let me actually start off by, by kind of talking about how a simple or typical uh, software program might execute on a computer, okay? So let's say you've got a computer and it's, it's got an operating system like Windows on it. And what Windows will do is it will take, let's say the, the, the software can be represented by this, this rectangle here. And what it'll do is it'll take the instructions associated with that software and it's going to basically load that into RAM. So it's gonna load this into RAM and RAM is a computer's memory. So load this into RAM, which represents the memory of the computer. Okay, and then the operating system will instruct the computer to start executing this application. It's going to say go go um, line by line and actually execute the instructions. And it's going to begin at what we call the entry point. So the first instruction that you can actually execute in an application is called the entry point. You'll hear this often in the context of of malware, and especially in the context of traditional uh, file infectors and parasitic infectors. And what an entry point basically is, it's the first instruction associated with the computer program that's actually executed, uh, that's actually run. And the computer basically steps, kind of goes step by step uh, through the instructions starting at the entry point. Uh, and and it, it, there are situations in which it might branch to other instructions and, and you know, could deal with interrupts and so on and so forth. It's not like a linear process, but it starts at the entry point and kind of tries to work its way down and then branches if necessary to other instructions based on what the actual instructions are underneath. Now, given that the entry point is really the, the point at which software execution actually begins, it's not too surprising that the vast majority of computer viruses work by modifying the entry point of the program because obviously a computer virus wants to execute and in order to execute it's going to modify the entry point. And there, there are kind of two ways you could imagine modifying the entry point. Um, so the first way is you could imagine, and I'll, maybe I'll kind of draw this out, uh, you could imagine that a virus might modify the entry point and put actual virus code at the entry point. So instead of now having the old entry point, you could imagine the virus payload will be kind of here uh, and then uh, subsequent to that you'll see the, the original instructions that were in the software application. So really the virus is kind of overwritten the entry point and some other instructions that kind of place itself there so that it can be executed. And in this case, the virus will be executed immediately when the program is launched, okay? The other thing you can do um, is basically, instead of modifying uh, the, 
the, the entire set of, of initial instructions, you can modify the very first instruction, the, the kind of the entry point itself, and have that entry point now point to the location where the actual virus is located. And you, you can, in this case, uh, you know, imagine that the, the first line of the entry point is going to be, uh, let's say, a, a modified, and you can put in there maybe some kind of a jump instruction or a branch instruction. Uh, and then you have the rest of the program right here. Uh, and then you might have the virus that's kind of appended to the rest of the program at the end. And uh, what you'll typically do here is you'll use a jump instruction or a branch instruction to ensure that control is passed basically to the virus itself. So you might use a, a jump or what's called a branch. Uh, and it's typically uh, in assembly, we say BRA. And by the way, when I say when I say jump, usually in assembly, it's just written as JMP, which is why I just put uh, uh, JMP as opposed to JUMP. But then what typically happens is that the the, uh, the virus body is executed, and after it's finished executing, then control is kind of passed back to the main program, and the main program finishes, but now the virus has kind of done its damage. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually maybe stop right here. I hope you've kind of found this useful, and I'll talk maybe about uh, other variations on theme that are used uh, within this context. Having kind of set this framework up, we'll talk about some of the other techniques that virus writers have employed, but the first technique is really the, the notion of, of basic viruses that, that really modify their entry points, and it's a very popular technique that a lot of viruses have employed. Thanks a lot, and I hope you join me for the, uh, the next video where I'll talk about how this technique has evolved over time.